What's up folks, it's your boy DT2.0 and today we have an unboxing and initial impressions of the Alienware M16R1. Now, I've been waiting on this laptop for about three weeks now and I finally got it in my hands. Now, I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but life happens. So I guess I'm back to square one, trying to find that perfect laptop to create that balance. You know, like y'all be on Tinder sometimes. <laughs> I'm just playing. And with that being said, let's get into it. Now, first things first, I ordered this laptop on Valentine's Day because I ain't have nothing else to do and finally got it after a few delays and missed deliveries. I went to go pick it up from FedEx and when I saw the box, it was no surprise that Dell has not changed. They shipped this thing to me in nothing but a brown paper bag like I ordered it from the liquor store. Are you serious? Even ripped up like this, already halfway ass open. Half ripped open, dirty, and looking like the package stopped in New Orleans for Mardi Gras for a few days before it got to me. Luckily, they didn't just leave it because it had to be signed for it because it definitely would have gotten stolen, half ripped open with exactly what's on the contents on the box written on the outside. So I assume, this is just me assuming, that Dell is fully confident in the way the box is nice and soft in the inside, pause, to secure the laptop enough to not be damaged. But we about to find out. So let's do it. Now, before we open up this box, let's talk the specs. This thing sports the Intel Core i9-13900HX, 16 gigabytes of RAM, that's two eight gigabyte sticks, one terabyte SSD, the GeForce 4080 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, a 16 inch QHD plus display running at 240 Hertz and 100% DCI-P3, y'all know how I feel about that. Has Nvidia G-Sync, a full HD IR webcam, a per key Alien FX RGB keyboard, which has always been one of my favorite keyboards on the market, sans Lenovo. The only thing that I don't like about this so far is it's weighing at a hefty 7.17 pounds as listed on their website. This thing comes in my favorite color in what they used to call Dark Side of the Moon, but now it's called Dark Metallic Moon. So we're gonna look at it and see if it's an actual difference. Total cost was $2,500 with tax and shipping, but disclaimer, I received 10% off for being affiliated with the military and not YouTube. So figure it to be $2,700, $2,800 if you were to purchase today. And I just looked on the website today. Uh, it doesn't even look like they have this model listed. They only have one model upgraded to from this and it's like $3,200. So hopefully y'all get it. All right typical Dell packaging and actually this is not actually padded it's just covered cardboard on the left side they have a silicone bag silicon silica silica gel oh this is not a ziploc bag this time but you have your power cable I'm gonna toss that to the side and oh man, they look, look like they went backwards with this mug. This is literally a, f a brick. Seriously, this cable is thick as hell. Pause. Thick as hell. Jeez Louise, this is probably the biggest adapter that I've seen coming from Alienware in a minute. So, um, yeah, maybe this thing is high powered like that. Put that to the side. And other than that, no, nothing in the top. We have the little tab because they're doing great on packaging, really Apple-like these days. We're going to set that to the side. Books, right? M16R1, warranty safety. And look at that, y'all. The exposure. We got some stickers. Uh, they're reflective, so it's hard for the camera to pick up with this light. But we got some stickers. So we're going to toss those stickers in this damn book aside because we ain't into all that. And also a thank you card from Alienware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, that's what's all that's in this box. All right. So here we are. Now, when I pulled this out of the box, it felt hefty. I'm not going to lie. It did feel heavy, but maybe it's because I've been handling MacBooks for a while, and it's been a while since I've had an Alienware this big. The last one I had was a, a X, uh, the X17, 
So, hmm, haven't had one this thick in a while. Pause. I'm terrible with that. But anyway, let's take this wrapping off. Or like I like to say, let's pull the drawers off of this. So, uh, there we go. So pull the two tabs to the side. All right, we got some. Yeah, now right, we got bush. Uh, all right. So first things first, it doesn't really look that different from Dark Side of the Moon. Maybe a little bit metallic, a little bit more metallic, but no glitter flakes in it or anything like that. What I do see and also feel is that 16, if y'all can see it, is actually embossed in there. So that's pretty nice. It means they put a little bit extra work. On the flip side, it looks a little different. They ha actually have uh, what seems to be like a little uh, ridge here to raise it up, I guess, to get some more air in uh, here with the vents. So that's pretty good. But everything else looks pretty normal to the older R series. And I'm talking R15 and R17. Now, opening this thing up. Man. All right, let me plug this thing in and power it on so you guys can see what it looks like. But before we do that, let's do a quick roundabout. Now on the right side or on the left side, you have an ethernet port and a USB-A port and also a headphone microphone combo jack, if you can see that there. On the back side, you have two USB-Cs, USB-A, HDMI, what looks like a display port, and also an SD card slot. Give you a closer look at that. And on the right side, not a damn thing. So that's a, look at that. It won't even focus because it's not a damn thing. So that's all you get. As far as fingerprints goes, it doesn't look like it holds that many fingerprints or any fingerprints at all. And even if it did, it doesn't seem like uh, they would stay. But, you know, it's not like I've been eating chicken wings today, so they wouldn't leave fingerprints anyway. But I do like the grip. But this thing, you better have some big ass forearms because this thing is kind of hefty. Now, let's power it on. Now, I said it once before, but I'm going to reiterate it this time. This thing is big AF. Make sure that the bag that you have is actually able to accommodate this big ass laptop, especially if you're upgrading from, say, a 15 inch X series or even a 17 inch X series or some type of MacBook. This thing is not blade like this thing has been to McDonald's maybe one too many times. So if you have lower back issues, you may want to reconsider, especially if you combine this with this big ass brick that it comes with. But all joking aside, if you've had a 17 inch laptop before from some years back, maybe about five years back when they all were big as hell, with the exception of MacBook, this is just a tiny bit smaller than that. I don't have any issues with big laptops. I do have issues with big, bricks but not with big laptops i like my laptop like i like la laptops like i like those thick ass ig models a little bit on the hefty side and i probably shouldn't have said that moving on now outside of the heft i like the way this thing feels in the hand or in some people's cases because it's so damn heavy under the arm it's solidly constructed but that's no surprise because alienware has been making this model for a while, send some modifications to it over the last few years. There are vents on each side, a vent here on the top, and of course, all of those vents at the bottom to get air to force through. Um, so all of the windows, no pun intended, are open on this laptop. Dad joke. The hinge is just as sticky as it has been in the past. Anywhere where you position it, it's gonna stay with little wobble. It's not a touch screen, so you don't have to worry about the wobble anyway unless you're shaking the damn table, which I don't think you, you would. Um, little bit, little screen flex, but not too much. Again, because this laptop is so thick, the screen flex is very minor. The RGB lighting of it, same Alienware iconic racetrack lights in the back, same iconic Alienware head on the lid, same iconic, iconic Alienware lights on the keys, which again, the lighting on their keys, I rank next to Lenovo, the top uh in the business no doubt argue with your mama i love that they didn't cheap out on the ports like on the x15 
I love that most ports are still in the back with only the convenient ports here on the left side. And those convenient ports are the Ethernet, a USB-A, and the headphone microphone jacks where they are easily accessible. I love that in the back that those ports are actually aligned, unlike the, the X15 where they were all over the place, so my OCD is not going into overdrive. There's nothing to complain about here when it comes to ports because it's such a big laptop. The design queue has been part of the M-Series construction for a long time, and I've always been a fan of it. So as far as construction and ports overall, I'm giving this an A. Now, before we get into what's the performance and all that of the laptop, let's see what's going on in the inside with these guts. Pause. So here are the guts. Now, the M-Series uh, is promoted to be a little bit thicker to allow more cooling, as you can see by the number of fans that we got in here. So that's something that you're going to have to accept in the name of a good and cool gaming experience, I guess. There is a lot of padding in here, or in, this, in, in the CPU and GPU's case, what they call Element 31, to prevent heat dissipation between components and to the chassis, so I guess that's great. The fans, again, are in here, normal four fans, but in a funky position. I think last time they were in even spots, but it seems that this time we have a fan that's dedicated for the GPU and CPU. You have your two RAM slots here. They're both replaceable, upgradable, outstanding. These are Hynix cheap RAM, so obviously if I keep this laptop, this is going to be upgraded. Here's your Wi-Fi card that's covered with something to, to dissipate the heat, and also your, uh, your one terabyte SSD along with three other SSD or places to put SSD slots. So pretty simple. Uh, to, to, be, to be honest with you, nothing really complicated. A lot of moving parts in here, literally, especially with these fans. But I'm glad to see that the RAM is, is replaceable or uh, continues to be replaceable and upgradable in the M series along with the extra SSD card slots. So great on that. You have your two speakers here and your 86 watt hour standard, what they call rechargeable lithium ion battery. So you can still get on planes because it's under the 100 uh, watt hour uh, limit. So that's the inside. Moving on. Now on to the display. And I got one word for the display. And that's outstanding. It's very good. And this is coming from somebody who uses a 4K OLED on a daily basis. The QHD Plus 240 Hz display at 16 inches, it's very good. That's a pixel density of 188 PPI, considerably more than my 42 inch 4K L. I can't say it because it's going to start popping up the. Uh, I can't say it because these TVs are listening, but the C2 that I have, so the crispiness is there. Now, all of my 4K OLEDs that I have in here, and I have one in my bedroom and my living room because they're cheaper these days, they're at 120 hertz max. But I can see the difference here in this QHD Plus display with the 240 hertz, even in daily operations. It's not huge, but the, the extra butteriness is there. Now, with gaming, you're definitely going to feel the difference because now, with more frames, you have that split second edge that everybody else not using 120 hertz OLED has that you don't have. So you may win an extra round or two. The display is bright. I love the colors with the 100% DCI-P3 and of course the saturation. I like this red right here. It may not translate in the, ca in, in the, in the camera, but this red is, and these blues are just popping off the screen right now. The blacks surprisingly are quite deep let me get rid of that, are quite deep. And it's, to be honest, they're deep and I'm spoiled from having these OLEDs. They're not OLED blacks, but surprisingly for an LCD screen, it's, it, it's quite deep. There's a little bit of IPS glow, but not much, but that's expected with this. That's normal. And the thing that really surprised me about this display, and I'm going to show you a clip of me in the dark room, is that this has very, very, very little backlight bleed. Maybe a little bit at the bottom here, but you, could, you have to really look for it. And I think it, it'll probably look worse on camera than it does in real life. Uh, I've only had one laptop in here that had so little light, light bleed, and that was pretty much every high-end MSI laptops that I've reviewed. Those were, to were quite good. So I'm hoping that Dell has fixed 
the manufacturing of their of their uh, their uh, their displays and I'm not just winning here by having one good one. Overall, I'm giving the display an A in my book because I mean, it's not an OLED and, and you guys know how I feel about, I'm a big fan of OLEDs, but it's not an OLED, but man, it's damn near close. So A in my book. Now on to the keyboard. If you've seen any of my videos on any Alienware laptops that I've done in the past, you'll know that next to Lenovo in the Legion series, this is one of the best feeling keyboards in the gaming market. And this is for me personally. And this is the base model, except for the upgrade with the lighting. Argue with your mammy about that. Some folks would upgrade to the Cherry MX keyboard, but I'm not a big fan of that keyboard because though I do like the feel of it, like the key, re the, the key resistance and the key travel, it's just too clicky and loud for me. You can't take a laptop with Cherry MX keys anywhere without getting on somebody's nerves. So I'm giving this particular keyboard an A because it has the perfect key travel to me and the perfect resistance for me. And that it has the perfect, and I don't know how to put this, the perfect bounce back. Can I use bounce back? Let's use bounce back. Like, I don't know, going at it on a springy mattress. That was probably was a little off the cuff. Anyway, the only thing that I don't like about this keyboard is the smaller right shift key. It's just a tad bit smaller, but it's still smaller that I make mistakes every now and again. I've seen worse. Fucking MSI's keyboards have the shift key the same size as the other keys down there. And I haven't reviewed any of their, any of their current laptops, so they may or may not have fixed it. Um, I think they should have shrank these directional buttons here and made the shift key a little bit larger like they do in the MacBooks and on a couple of other computers that are, that are out there. But like I said before, that or this shift key is not a deal breaker. So the keyboard is an A in my book. Now the trackpad, Nah, it's mid at best, but let's just be real. Who's using the trackpad on a laptop primarily for gaming anyway? Normally, if I have this laptop, if I bought this laptop, normally when I'm traveling with the big ass power brick, I'm bringing the number one weapon with me to give me that edge, and that's a mouse. So you're not winning with the trackpad. So this thing will get you through the day, but definitely it's okay. It's not MacBook or even Razer like it. I don't want to keep swinging on, on MacBook's nuts, but everybody knows that the MacBook trackpad is revolutionary. I think Razer got close. Now, is it evenly placed? And I'm not talking in the center. So if your OCD, you know, is, is, if you have OCD, you might not like that. But is it evenly laid inside the chassis? Yes. Is it clicky? Yes. Is it large enough? Eh, I guess so. You know, eh, I guess we can work with it. You know, like your girl tells you, it can be larger, but it'll suffice. Probably shouldn't have said that. Can it get you through the day? Absolutely. But don't expect the MacBook or Razor quality in this trackpad. It's functional and only there because it has to be. That's all. Because it has to be. If it didn't have one, everybody can be, be complaining about no trackpad, no matter how trashy it was. Now on to the speakers, and I'm just, I'm real picky with audio, so I'm going to grade this a little bit harder than I do anything on this laptop or any laptop, but to me, they're mid at best. Alienware wants to call this immersive audio, but it's definitely not. They actually want to call this Dolby Atmos. <laughs> Dolby should yank your license because it most definitely is, is not. They are loud, and when gaming, you can hear some separation, so it does sound decent, but uh, they're loud enough for you to hear across the room if you're listening to a, a podcast, but lacks any dynamic range or low end. And that's just me, again, grading this a little bit harder uh, than I would do any other component of the laptop. I think on a laptop this thick, there's ample space or could have they could have made ample use the ample space in there to at least add some I don't know mini subs. They tried to sneak one past us here by adding them and making them loud, but my iPhone has better low end and dynamic range than these speakers. And I'm just being real with you. So grade in my book, it's a C for being loud, but that's about it. The speakers are only getting a good enough grade for you to not get your ass beat when you get home. You know, like you used to do when you used to get those report cards. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
Before I move on to the performance, let's just talk real quick about battery life. <laughs> you're, not, you're gonna barely get two hours out of this thing. The power brick could tell you that before you even turn on the laptop, that this thing needs a lot of power. So, especially if you game on it. If you game on this thing, 45 minutes to an hour, max. If you're not gaming on it, uh, I will give it two hours. I had it unplugged yesterday when I was doing some things and I was at 18% in like 15 minutes. So hopefully my math is right, but it did not last long and I really wasn't doing anything with it. I was just, it was just sitting here on. So if you looked at any of my, my reviews before, when I'm, especially when I'm doing these gaming laptops, I really don't look at battery life or grade the battery life because I don't expect the battery, especially these, these desktop replacement laptops, I don't expect the battery to last long <laughs> at all, at all. I expect the battery to be there to power this thing up, to distribute the power with inside the, the laptop. That's about it. I don't expect it to, to get me through a day of taking this thing to work. I'm not taking this big ass motherfucker to work. Excuse my French. Anyway, just wanted to say that on battery life. Moving on to performance. Now with the performance, for the sake of myself and why I'm doing this review, I'm only comparing this to my Alienware Aurora R13, which I ultimately would like this laptop to replace. My R13 is a 12th gen i9 and RTX 3080, no TI, just a 3080, and 64 gigabytes of RAM, so it seems that there could be a competitive edge by it being bigger, have more room for air, and the beefier, older graphics card, and also more RAM. Again, this comparison is for my own benefit and may help somebody that may be going through the same decision-making process where you didn't fall for the banana in the tailpipe by getting a 3080 Ti and wanted to wait for the 4000 series to come out. Now that they're out, now you want to pit this against your 3060, 37, to 3080 that you have in your desktop. Now, I love my R13. Just to put that out there, no doubt. It's caused me no problems in the year or so that I've had it. The only thing I do, that I don't like about it is I can't lug that big mug around when I'm on travel. So what I'm going to do is run 3D marks, some 3D marks tests um, and also test some gaming performance. I'll show you guys some gaming performance of a Gears of War, God of War, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Spider-Man. All of these games at max settings. So no DLSS, none of that extra stuff that takes the, the, the visuals away from it. I just want to push these laptops to the, or this laptop and also my R13 to its limits to see what it can do when, when it doesn't have any help. I'm going to have, again, I'm going to have everything at max settings and only dropping the resolution on my R13 to match that of the M16 to keep it fair. Again, I'm not looking for one to clobber the other one, just for the M16 to be close enough for me to say, you know what, I can deal with a little bit of drop or the same performance if I can take my rig with me. So with that, let's see the results. Looking at the results, it's kind of surprised me. These tests were way closer than what I thought. Actually, the M16 beat the R13 by a slight edge in each, each test. I did the Port Royal test, as you can see on the screen, Time Spy Extreme, and Speedway, which is a newer one that I hadn't used before. But I think the Speedway is kind of a combination between Time Spy Extreme and Port Royal. Right? It's the actual, they're calling it the actual gaming or the ultimate gaming test. And they were pretty close. So performance wise, using these synthetic tests are really close. But you guys know how I feel about that. We have to put it in the real world. Now, those tests matched up against every other laptop that I did with at least an i9 or a Ryzen 9 and a 3080 or above. And the older laptops that I've reviewed in the past, this thing clobbered them. The Legion 7 that I had probably about a year ago beat that by roughly 45%. The Razer Blade Advance that I had in here with an i9 and a 3080 doubled the performance. This thing doubled that performance. Crazy. So if you're sitting there asking yourself, well, you know, I had a 3080 Ti, eh, do I want to upgrade to a 4080? Yes. I think it's time for you to upgrade if you've been waiting for the 4000 series chips to come out. They're out now, they're available. Even though I had to wait three weeks for this mug, they're available, you can find them, they're here. 
And if you have a, if you have a 3080 and an i9 12 gen in your older laptop and you want to get better performance, not this particular laptop, but these newer laptops, yes, they're clobbering them. Just saying. Now I'll put up the scores for the real world tests. Now for these, I either played them or I ran the benchmark. Now for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, as you can see, there's a 20, 18 to 20 frame difference in performance, close, but the M16 is coming out on top. In Spider-Man, I actually had to play that one. I played the same areas and with the M16, I was averaging 110 frames. With the R13, 90 frames per second. For God of War, same thing, not really a benchmark, but they were roughly the same, 70 to 75 frames per second on each. And with Gears of War, Again, I ran the benchmark, and with the M16, 125 frames per second, and then with the R13, I actually had to run that a couple times because I couldn't believe it was that much of a difference, 99 frames per second. Now, with these adventure games or these, these games where you play by yourself, um, of course, they're pushing the cards and the processors to the limit, so they are going to be close. And they're going to stress these machines. Now, if you're playing something like a, you know, a, ma a massive online game where you have a, a shooter, or anything, you're going to get more frames like that. I'm just using the games that will push these cards to the limits. So in conclusion with that, as you can see, the M16 with the new 4080 and 13th Gen i9 went toe-to-toe -to -toe with an actual desktop and won, albeit a split decision. Each round was close, or close enough for me. It's not a newer desktop that it went against, but it's still a desktop nonetheless. It was only made just, just, just about a year ago. This really puts things into perspective now because I actually have a desktop replacement on my hands. So it looks like this thing is winning, but my decision ain't made yet. It might be a deal breaker in there, just saying. Now, before I get into the conclusion of this and why I will or won't use this laptop or keep this laptop, let's talk about heat. As far as heat goes, when, when I was playing these games, the fans were running at a thousand. And though the surface was hot, especially up here in, in the uh, top area, just over the keyboard, especially on the chin of the uh, of the, the display, there was no drop in performance, no hiccups, nothing. So Alienware computers, you, if you get, if you don't know, Alienware computers are created to run hot. Even if you go into to uh, Alienware's command center, it has a thermal setting right here that that asks you, what do you want to do? You want the thermal to go hot, hot as hell? You want to run the fans at full, full speed or you want us to, the fans to chill down? You can have, you can pick your, how you want this thing to operate when it comes to thermal performance. So it's on you. If you want, the, want, want this thing to run hot, you can let it run hot. But it won't, as far as my experience, it did not drop in performance. So with that being said, if you were personally worried about heat damaging your components by it's getting too hot, I mean, uh, let's just be real, it has, a, it has a warranty, so you're covered for the first year, and if you're that worried, I mean, hey, look, just get the extended warranty. But in my experience, out of all the Alienware laptops I've had in here, and I'm talking uh, M15R4, M15R3, X15, X17, I've, they got hot, no doubt, but they didn't burn themselves up. In fact, I would think this M16 runs quite cooler than all of them, because on all of them, I think I said it in one of my other videos that I could actually, especially on the, on the X17 R1, I could actually put bacon here and fry it because it was so hot. I couldn't even touch it. This, I could touch it. The, the, the chin of the screen, I can actually touch it and not rip my hand back. So that's a, that's a plus for the M16. All right, now on to my conclusion. Now, after all of that, and I know this video is running long, Let's talk about the not so goods and what I deem and one that I deem as a deal breaker of why I'm sending this particular laptop back to Dell. Drawback number one is the size and weight. So again, just be ready to be amazed by how heavy this thing is. Make sure your current bag, I said it before, is big enough because this thing is seven pounds on the higher end. And for some reason, you can carry a seven pound baby all day, but geez Louise, this thing, yeah, it may, it'll get heavy in the backpack. Especially if you're carrying that big ass brick that comes with it that's an extra three pounds. So while the laptop is listed at seven pounds, I think these manufacturers should also include the weight of the power brick. 
because it's 10 pounds or just over 10 pounds total. I mean, TVs do it. If you go to Best Buy's website, and I'm not promoting them at all, but if you go to Best Buy's website, they'll show you the weight of a TV with and without the stand. Now, I assume that's for wall mounting purposes, but still, it's still listed. Why can't Dell or MSI or Razer do it? Because it's a little misleading. If you tell me I got a two pound laptop, but a three pound power brick, man, that's five pounds I gotta lug around. Come on, let's be real with it. But that's about it except for the one deal breaker and why this, this laptop is going back. I purposely didn't mention it previously because I wanted to save it until the end. Uh, I even muted parts of gaming so you couldn't hear it. And that's just the, and that's the fan noise, right? I, how can I put this? I'm used to fans being loud and I don't mind the whoosh sound or the, the, the fan sound, like, like you have a fan in your bedroom. But this laptop, and it may be just this model, has a high-pitched bird gargling on Listerine sound that I just can't tolerate. And I'm going to play it for you right here. Especially at lower speed. Now, once this thing gets up to high speed, it pretty much goes away, but it's not long before it comes right back because the fans vary in speeds depending on what you're doing. So I have to send it back. All right, this is a $3,000 laptop. Can I swap this out for another one? Yeah, but do I want to take a chance of it doing the same thing when I get it? <sighs> Let's just hope this is a run, a, a, a one-off. If I do get another one and it doesn't do this, great, but if it does, not so great. So I'm a little iffy about taking a check, second chance. But overall, this is a great laptop. It looks good, but you have to be a fan of Alienware. It comes in the color that I like because I, I really wasn't cool with the X series coming in just white. Hated it. The construction is solid. The performance is great. Beat out my R13. Cooling is just fine. To me, nothing to worry about. The only thing is the loud ass high pitched fan noise that I just can't stand. Even if it's just sitting here on and I'm over in the living room watching TV and the fans come on for some reason because something in the background is going, I'll hear it and it'll get on my nerves. I'll run over here and close the lid. Can I wear headphones? Absolutely. Do I have to? Hell no, not for a laptop that's $3,000. It's not what you do with that. So maybe it's just mine and hopefully it's just mine. And if you have one and you're watching this review, Hit me in the comments to give me some confidence to get another one, because right now, I don't. That's all I have, folks. I'm glad to be back, to be honest with y'all. And thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the vibe. The only difference here is when you subscribe to me, you don't have to pay for it like you do with those OnlyFans accounts you got. I'm just playing. Y'all stay safe. I'm out. Deuces.